Hey, this is Dr. Dave Cummings from Point Loma Nazarene University. This is a video for my Microbiology of Infectious Diseases course. This is part two of a two-part series. In the first part, we looked at the ultrastructure of the envelope of gram-negative bacteria. And what I want to do now is look at how gram, uh, pardon me, in the first one we looked at gram-positives. In this one, we're looking at gram-negatives, and we want to look at the structure and function of all the layers of that envelope. Remember, the, the envelope is the, if you were to draw a bacterium, this is the envelope. It's that interface between the outside and the inside. And it's not just a red line on a slide. It's not just a membrane. There's more to it. And the gram negatives and gram positives are different from one another uh, in this way. So we're going to look at the cell membrane, which all cells have. And then we're going to look at the lipopolysaccharide layer, which is unique to the gram negatives, as well as the periplasm, also unique to gram negatives. And then briefly, we'll see the cell wall as well. So as a reminder, uh, the bacteria are what we're talking about here. The whole concept of gram-negative, gram-positive only applies to the bacteria. We've got two branches on the tree of life that contain the gram-positive. So that's the Firmicutes and the Actinobacteria. And all the rest of them are gram-negatives in their structure. So um, genetically, diversity-wise, the majority of the bacteria that exist are in the gram-negative category. As far as infections go, it's a coin toss, right? Half the infections are gram positives, half of them are gram negatives. Really depends on anatomical location more than anything else. But keep in mind, we're talking about the uh, the domain bacteria. This does not. This concept doesn't uh, include the archaea or the eukaryotes in any way. So in the last um, the last part, the first part of this, in the last video, I showed you how similar gram negatives and gram positives look in the microscope. You couldn't ever just look at these microbes and know whether they were gram positive or gram negative because they look the same. And you know, most of what's out there is either rods or coxy. So here I've got two different rod-shaped bacilli, Listeria monocytogenes, which we used as our example of a gram positive in the previous video, and uh, E. coli, which we're gonna use as our gram negative. So we're gonna take this E. coli here and we're gonna slice right down into it, and we're gonna look at that skin, that layer that we see wrapped around the cytoplasm and see what's going on inside there. So <clears throat> if we do a, a cross-section of that envelope, and remember the envelope refers to the multiple layers that form this barrier between the outside and the inside. Some people will refer to the all these layers combined as the cell wall. That's not technically accurate, but you'll see that often. So recognize what they're talking about when you see it. Technically, the cell wall, the structure that is responsible for giving physical rigidity and support to the cell, is this layer of peptidoglycan that we'll talk about in just a minute. But some people do call the whole envelope a wall, and we'll just have to forgive them and move on. So like all living things, there's a cytoplasmic membrane. It's a phospholipid bilayer, right? There's a periplasmic leaflet, there's a cytoplasmic leaflet, and the entire interior of all this is very, very hydrophobic and it allows for selective permeability. Selective permeability, which is the key function of that cytoplasmic membrane to determine what can come and go. Now, what's really distinct or unique about the gram negatives is there's a second membrane. There's not just the one membrane. So imagine if, if this cytoplasmic membrane is sort of like a balloon um, and the interior, maybe it's a water balloon, and the interior of the water balloon, the water is the cytoplasm, right? Imagine then somehow putting that entire filled water balloon inside another balloon, right? That other balloon is another membrane. So gram negatives have a second membrane. So sometimes we call these the inner and the outer membranes. Uh, it's not quite as specific as, as we should be because this outer membrane is not exactly a phospholipid bilayer. It is a lipid bilayer and it does have a lot of phospholipids in it. The inner leaflet, the one that's facing the periplasm, this inner leaflet is almost exclusively phospholipids just like your typical cytoplasmic membrane. But the outer leaflet is a mix of both um, phospholipids and uh, a separate molecule called lipopolysaccharide. Lipopolysaccharide, so a lipid connected to polysaccharide. So the lipid component is of course gonna lock itself in the hydrophobic interior of the membrane, but the polysaccharide is actually not only, um, not only uh, made of polar covalent bonds, but it also has a whole bunch of negative charges on it.
And so they're going to want to interact with the water on the outside. And what you end up with is this really dense, I always think of it like a forest, on the surface of all these polysaccharides that lend more structural support and some protection to the bacterial cell. So sometimes this outer membrane we simply refer to as the LPS layer. That's a real common way to talk about this. Now, in a test situation, you need to show me you know what LPS means. So don't just call this LPS, call it lipopolysaccharide. But in reading and talking, we're gonna call this the LPS layer very frequently. Now, if the inner membrane, the cytoplasmic membrane, is all about selective permeability, this, this outer membrane, the LPS layer, is permeable, but it's not quite so selective. Most of the transport proteins uh, represented by these little three pink tubes are what we call porins. And the porin is really just a water-filled channel that if something is small enough to fit through, it's gonna fit through. It's gonna go one direction or the other. So this outer membrane is a bit leaky relative to the inner membrane. So most of the selectivity, not all, but most, happens at the cytoplasmic membrane. The outer membrane is really just sort of size selective. If you're small enough, come on in. If you're small enough, go on out. Go ahead and diffuse in either direction if it's small enough. Whereas the inner membrane is far more specific about exactly what chemicals are moving across that membrane. Now. In between the two membranes, right, if, we've got, if this is a, a water balloon with another balloon stretched around it, you now have a compartment, don't you? You've got a gap between the two layers, between the two membranes. And so you truly have a compartment, and it's the only compartment in, in bacteria, uh, and we call it the periplasm. The space between two membranes, and it is different. It behaves differently, and there's some unique chemistry taking place in there. We'll see it on occasion throughout the semester, uh, unique processes that are taking place inside that periplasm. Embedded within the periplasm is the true cell wall. That's this structure here made of peptidoglycan, which we said in the last video, peptidoglycan is long parallel strands of polysaccharides, that's the glycan part, and it's cross-linked by short peptide chains of nine or 10 amino acids, giving it a very porous but rigid structure. Now, with the gram positives, the cell wall is somewhere around roughly 40 sheets, 40 layers of this peptidoglycan in thickness. In gram negatives, it's only six, seven, maybe eight sheets thick. So it's a much thinner peptidoglycan, and the peptidoglycan is contained within this periplasm. And then finally, one other thing I want to point out are these lipoproteins. These lipoproteins, the protein component links onto the peptidoglycan, the lipid component embeds inside the LPS layer because the interior of the LPS layer, just like the interior of the cytoplasmic membrane, is very hydrophobic. Uh, and so the lipo part will be embedded within that. And what this does is make sure that the, uh, the LPS layer and the peptidoglycan move together as one sheet uh, to minimize some of the shearing that could happen if all three of these layers, LPS, um, peptidoglycan, and cytoplasmic membrane were all unique and distinct uh, and free moving relative to one another. So I'd like you to learn this really well. Uh, get familiar with this diagram with the spatial relationship between the different layers, uh, the names of the layers and the components within the layers, as well as the basic functions of all the various components. You need to not only be able to recognize it and talk about it, you should be able to reproduce it from memory as well. Okay, so let's summarize what we just saw here. Gram negatives uh, represent most of the diversity there that's found in the domain bacteria. Um, and uh, pretty much any branch that is not distinctly gram-positive is going to be gram-negative. Uh, and unlike the gram-positives, there are more layers uh, in the gram-negatives. There's three distinct physical layers, and two of those layers create a compartment. So you've got a cell membrane and the LPS layer. They cr create the periplasm, the space between those two, and then the peptidoglycan resides within that periplasm. The cell membrane we know is selectively permeable. The LPS layer is more permeable and has a lot of porins, and so it's a bit leaky, um, though it is helpful. Uh, the gram negatives are, in fact, because of that LPS layer, more resistant to various chemical attacks than a gram positive would be. The lipid A I didn't mention is actually really toxic uh, to humans, and in fact, it's what we call a virulence factor virulence factor, something that allows a microbe to be virulent or cause disease. It's a virulence factor of virtually all gram negatives, and it can make us extremely sick and potentially even kill a person if there's too much of it in the bloodstream. Uh, uh, the periplasm is that space uh, 
between the outer and inner membranes, and it's really the only true compartment that you ever see in the bacteria. And then the peptidoglycan layer itself, the wall, the physical structure of the wall, is much thinner in a gram negative than it is in the gram positive. It's only a handful of layers thick relative to the gram positive, which is dozens and dozens of layers thick. So there you go. Review these two videos as often as you need. This is fundamental information you've got to have for any microbiology course. And I hope you feel like you've learned something here.